In this episode, I'll introduce you to the concept of the API interaction model. We know that when you're designing an API, you have a lot of decisions to make. Things like the architectural style, whether it's going to be REST or SOAP, uh, message formats like XML or JSON, and a lot of other smaller decisions like error formats, message patterns, status codes. All of these things are important. Really, we want you to make rational design choices rather than arbitrarily picking things from a design bucket. An interaction model is going to help you along that path of making informed choices. An interaction model is an abstract definition of the interactions that will take place between your API and the applications that use it. Really just think of it as a blueprint for the APIs that you will create. I really believe that great APIs are designed by considering these interactions first. And that's rooted in another idea that great design starts with having the right perspective, a user perspective. This user-centered design perspective is paying big dividends in the product design world. Designers who focus on their user's experience are able to build really compelling, great interfaces for their products. They end up with the products that we want to use, the ones that are easy to use, familiar, and are ultimately a joy. Our goal is to apply the same design philosophy to the API world and encourage usage by improving the developer experience. The API interaction model helps us get there by focusing our attention on how applications will use the API, rather than simply how we will expose our services and data to the world. To build an API interaction model, we need to ask ourselves three pretty simple questions. One, who will use this API? Second, what will it be used to create? And third, how will our API actually behave? So let's start with this question of who will use the API we are building. There are a lot of actors involved in an API interaction, uh, but when we're building this interaction model, we're going to focus on three of them in particular. The developer, the application that the developer builds, and the human end user who in turn uses that application. Our goal is to narrow down our audience so that we can identify common characteristics for the group. We want to have a persona that can drive the developer experience that we're trying to create. So for example, how would you classify the developers that you are targeting with your API? Are you targeting startup developers, enterprises? Are there specific industries you're going after? Uh, you could also start to categorize your end users, uh, maybe categorize them based on age, or wealth, or geography, or other market segment categories. A really important categorization is the platform that the application will be built upon. You may be targeting the mobile platform, for example, as a way to extend your reach to those human end users. And maybe you're targeting specific mobile devices like iOS or Android, or you could also be targeting server-based applications or native apps or browser-based single-page apps or even smart TVs and consoles. Knowing the type of platform and developer you want to target will allow you to form your API design decisions with their persona in mind. Right? The goal here is to put yourself in that developer's shoes and design an interface that will feel simple, familiar, and safe to them. Understanding your developer audience will go a long way into making the correct design decisions and improving that experience overall. Now, none of this means that we don't want to encourage unexpected usage, right? Although we're targeting specific developer audiences, it's okay if other segment categories come along and start using our API. The key here is by focusing on a specific audience, we can really get to a great design. Now that you know who you are targeting with your API, you can begin thinking about what those developers might build with it. Start thinking about possible applications and activities that could be built with your interface. Most importantly, think about those possibilities from a developer perspective, not your own service perspective. How will your API benefit them? What will they build to achieve their own goals? And at this point, you can also start to ignore or eliminate activities that are appealing to your developer base, but you might not necessarily want to encourage. Once these activities or tasks are defined, we can start defining the actual behavior for the interface. In other words, we can define a model for interaction. And at this point, you should be able to construct a usage scenario that includes a data model and the task that the consuming application is likely to execute. So this would be the information that passes back and forth 
to go along with the task that you defined in the last step. Don't forget to model air conditions as these are an important part of the interaction and try your best to keep this abstract. We're not talking here about forming URIs or defining message formats. We're really interested in an abstract definition of the interaction. So let's put this all together now. If we start by addressing the questions of who will use your API, what they will use it for, and how your API will behave, we can build an interaction model that describes the API design from a developer perspective. I'm sure you have a favorite way of expressing design requirements, and that's fine. Just make sure you keep a developer experience-based perspective in mind while writing them. If you can do that, you'll be making a strong first step towards building a great design and ultimately a great API.